Hi everybody and welcome again to Z-Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big every single time. Remember, it doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, we've got you covered. Before we get into some Major League Baseball action for July the 31st, I want to invite you to join to so have access to the VIP Club section which has all the tools to help you make your picks. So, as we're into the second half of the season, there's only two months left in the regular season, so teams are really starting to strive for uh, playoff positioning. So let's get started and look at some of the matchups here. There's a full slate of games. We will take a look at six of them. Detroit, Toronto, Arizona, Atlanta. The first game we want to look at is the Kansas City Royals and the New York Yankees. The Royals come into play average down. You can see they've lost their last three and three and three over their last six. While the Yankees are average status, they are also three and three over the last six, and they are coming off of a one nothing win. On the power ranking indicator, you can see that both teams are on that downward trend here. Uh, Kansas City at 10, the Yankees at plus 4. Neither team has named their starting pitcher for this game. If you look at the uh, over-under lately, you can see the Royals have been involved in games under the line in each of their last five, and the Yankees in three out of their last four. The score prediction, though, has it going the other way. Um, if this holds true, 11-3. In favor of the Yankees with 59% level of confidence, that would probably be over the line. The line has not yet been set, but that's definitely not going to be under the line. That's probably going to be an over-the-line score. Uh, if we look at the volatility oscillator, you can see that both teams have been pretty consistent, very consistent, in fact, is with regard to their favorite underdog status. The Yankees at plus 31, the Royals at plus 21. In the end, I like the Yankees at home, but because of the conflicting uh, information I'm seeing about the over-under with the score prediction and the trend, I would avoid the over-under bet. Milwaukee and Boston. Here's another game. Two teams heading in opposite directions. You can see that the Brewers are burning hot at the moment. They have won five out of their last six. And the Red Sox are ice cold up. They are coming off of a win, but they are only, if I can get this to come up properly, there we go. They're only 2-4 and four over their last six games, coming off of a 4-2 win over Cleveland. Aaron Ashby is scheduled to pitch for the Brewers, while Josh Mikowski is scheduled to pitch for the Red Sox. If you examine the pitching matchup more closely, you can see Ashby is 2-8 and eight on the year with a 4.38 ERA, but 1.08 ERA over his last three starts. He has been a poor bet overall at minus $306. Winkowski is 3-5 with a high ERA of 5.18, but has been better also over his last three with an ERA of 3.80. But he has been a poor bet as well at minus $50. If you look at the power ranking indicator, you see Milwaukee on the upward trend. They were at plus 8. Now they've jumped up to plus 20 just over the last day. You can see that Boston has been near the bottom here for a little bit of time. Now they're only at plus 1. If you look at the over-under, you can see that uh, Milwaukee has been involved in games over the line in five out of the last six, while Boston has been over in three out of the last six. The score predictor has Milwaukee by a 7-4 score with a confidence in prediction of 61.3%. If you take a look at the stability factor, you can see here uh, Milwaukee has been up and down all year with the stability. You can see uh, on May 21st they were at their high at plus 11. Now they're at plus 10, so they have dipped. A little bit since that time and Boston has been up and down as well they were at a season high plus 11 they are also plus 10 so even though overall for the season they're moderately stable the consistency factor is one thing to uh, take a look at before you make a bet on this game the way I'm seeing this though is I like the Brewers they're just playing too well right now um, Boston is struggling really badly in general I like Milwaukee to win this game any game going over the line Next game we want to look at is Baltimore and Cincinnati. The Orioles are heading in the right direction here. They're coming off of a win and four wins out of their last six. They are average up. The Reds are average down. They are three and three over their last six and coming off of a loss to uh, two Miami by a seven to six score. If you look at the over under, you can see that Baltimore has been involved in games over three out of the last six, Cincinnati in four out of the last six. And the score predictor has Baltimore by seven to three score with almost 61% level of confidence. The power ranking indicator shows the Reds, they were at plus 16, they increased to plus 22 over the last day, and Baltimore plus 25, and now they're at plus 15. How consistent are they performing with regard to their favorite underdog status? You can see 
not as consistent as some, especially Baltimore. Um, they were as high as plus 10 back on May the 18th. And over the last couple months, you can see they are down to plus 7. While Cincinnati was at a high of plus 17 back on July the 6th. And they are down to plus 15. So take a look at that with a grain of salt. So what do I think is going to happen in this game overall? Let's put it all together. I do like the Orioles. And I rolled upset. I think they're playing better ball right now than Cincinnati. I like the way they're heading. I like the trend. And I think, again, Orioles win, but avoid the over-under bet. Cleveland and Tampa Bay. Mets and Marlins. Next game we want to look at as we continue to scroll down through the full slate of games. Seattle and Houston. This is a great um, matchup in the AL West. The second place Mariners take on the first place Astros. You can see the Mariners are averaged down at the moment. And they have, uh, let's take a look at this. There we go. They are 3-3 three and three over their last six, coming off of a loss. While Houston is average at the moment, they are coming off of a win. And they are also 3-3 three and three over their last six games. George Kirby is scheduled to pitch for the Mariners. The Astros have not yet named their starter. Kirby is 2-3 and three on this season with a 3-5-0 ERA. And a slightly poor bet at minus $14. If you look at the over-under, you can see that Seattle has been under in the last two, four out of the last six. Houston has been over in three out of the last six with one push. The power ranking indicator shows how the trends have been for the two teams. Houston has dropped considerably with that three-game losing streak. Now, they are coming off the win, but they dropped from plus 26 down to plus 8. While Seattle increased from plus 10 up to plus 25. We take a look at the uh, volatility oscillator. Again, I like to look at this to see how stable the two teams have been. And this is pretty consistently upward trend for both teams. Uh, Houston at plus 26, Seattle at plus 19. So they have been performing consistent with regard to their favored underdog status. The score predictor has Houston by a 6 to 1 score with 61% level of confidence. I'm leaning in that direction as well. I like the Astros at home, but I think this one will be a lower scoring game. So take the Astros and under the line. The Dodgers and the Rockies. Here's a good matchup in the NL West. Even though the teams are in opposite directions, the Los Angeles Dodgers burning hot at the moment. They have won four out of their last six. While the Rockies are ice cold down, they have lost four out of their last six. If we can show this right here. Yeah, they have lost four of their last six. Um, the pitching matchup, Tony Gonsolin for the Dodgers and Herman Marquez for the Rockies. If you look at the uh, matchup closer, you can see Gonsolin is 11-1 and with a 2.26 ERA and just a 0 0.69 ERA over his last three starts. And he has been an outstanding bet at plus $432. While well, Marquez is 6-8 and eight with a 1 point, excuse me, a 5.25 ERA and plus 163. So he's been a solid bet as well. And the over-under... You see that the Dodgers over the line in their last three. Rockies over the line in their last two. A good indication this will probably be a high-scoring game. And the score prediction of 10-2 to 2 is right along that line. They're right on the edge there of being an over, depending on what the line is. But that's with a 64.5% level of confidence. The power ranking indicator shows the Dodgers at plus 23, while the Rockies have increased from plus 2 up to plus 12. The way I'm looking at this game here is I think that the Dodgers will win the game. I just don't see how the Rockies are going to win. Even though they're at home, the Dodgers are clearly a much better team. And Gonsolin has been an excellent pitcher this year. You know, only one loss with 11 wins. I like the Dodgers in the game going over the line. Minnesota, you see the Cubs and the Giants. This is the last game we want to look at is the Cubs and the Giants. Again, the Giants are going nowhere fast. They are dead up. They have are coming off of a win, but are just 1-5 and five over the last six, while the Cubs are 5-1 and one over their last six, burning hot down. The pitching matchup is Adrian Sampson for the Cubs versus Carlos Rodon for the Giants. Sampson is 0-1 with a nice ERA of 3.20, but a good bet at plus $358, while Rodon is 8-6 and six with a pretty good ERA of 3.18, but it's been a terrible bet at minus $503. His ERA is 1.06 over the last three starts. The score predictor likes the Cubs with an 8-4 score with about 66% level of confidence. If you look at the over-under, though, you can see that the Cubs have been involved in games under the line in their last four, and the Giants in three out of their last six. The power ranking indicator should not be much of a surprise. 
considering the trends of these two teams right now, you can see the Giants are at zero, and they've been at zero for the last few days. And the Cubs keep going up there at plus 29. This looks like a total mismatch, and I'm kind of thinking that that's how this is going to go. We'll take a look at the volatility oscillator real quickly. Neither team has been particularly stable. Uh, you can see that the Giants were as high as plus 9 back a couple months ago, and the Cubs are at plus 4. That looks like they're high for the season. Neither team has been particularly stable. In the end, I do like the Cubs. The Giants just aren't playing well enough to even pick them, even at home. I like the Cubs to win, and I would go with the game over the line. So there you have it. Those are the games for Major League Baseball for July 31st. Happy betting, and we will see you again next time.